Hello YouTube, Infinite Magic Ray Community, Gandalf here. The long-awaited Ultimate P PvE tier list, factoring in all the exclusives, factoring all the echoes that you could have on these heroes. What are the best heroes to invest in this game? That is the tier list we have for you here today. So I know a lot of you, when you see tier list, um, there's a lot, lots of thoughts around it. Um, I try not to be subjective here. I have consulted quite a few other veteran players within Bull Prime. These are players who've been around for more than a year. They're they're the top end players who probably have all these heroes built. I think for them, most of these heroes are all fully exclusive and they have the right echoes on them. So they can really talk about um, what, what does it really look like um, um, for these heroes once you have a fully maxed out. Having said that, um, I will try to comment in this uh, video about, you know, call some heroes that work really well, even exclusive zero. So you can try to aim for them if you're a newer player or if you're mid game, I think looking at, um, you know, the top, uh, top heroes here, you will get a good sense of, um, you know, which heroes to prioritize next. Um, again, remember this is PV, uh, PVE focus. So if you're, you know, PVP focus, I do have a PVP tier list. So I'll put that in the link to, in the description. And as always, I try to keep these tier lists up to date. So probably expect me to update these things once, once maybe a quarter, once half a year, the latest, uh, since we only get about one new hero a month now, I think. Um, so we do try to um, uh, keep it relatively um, uh, a lot more up to date with these things. Um, so when we start looking at the A, A plus tier, these are not bad heroes, especially the ones in A plus. They're viable. Um, if you get anything, I will say A plus um, on your rerolls, I think you know they're very viable. If you start getting heroes in your A, or if you're starting out with heroes in A, or heroes in the rework session section, I highly advise you to reroll or don't heavily invest into these heroes because there really isn't a place for them in any of the PvE content so far. Um, they wouldn't even serve you well in the faction teams when you have very limited options uh, for these various teams. So having said that, um, let's get started. So what are the, maybe I won't have time to go through every hero on the tier list. And if I do that, it will probably be an hour long video and you probably wouldn't want to stick around for that. So maybe I'll start with kind of from a principles basis, what makes a really good, strong PVE hero so that when new heroes are coming out, um, you know, you can, you can kind of gauge for yourself where does this sit on this list. Um, and then when I do future tier list updates, uh, I will talk about the movement in the tier list due to meta and content related impacts, uh, as well as spending more time focusing on um, the newer heroes that came out in relationship to others. Uh, similarly, I think many of you might have saw the tier list that was put out during the summer when Karzak and I did a collab. Um, so I'll try to spend more time talking about hero movements on this tier list today, and as well as commenting on some of the newer heroes, um, or heroes that kind of have seen a significant change in usage due to the newer content that we have seen in the, in the last um, half year or so. So what makes a really good PvE hero? Well, you really, we split into support versus damage dealer. For it to be a really good support, uh, it needs to pack a very full, well-rounded kit around debuffs, mostly focusing attack down and speed down. And the buffs you want are uh, damage reduction ones, usually like consolidation. Shields are more effective than, than the than the other ones. Uh, bigger the shield. Uh, shields is, is in general better than healing. Um, consolidation or is usually better than 
and then defense up, just because of how high the attack the enemy has. Whatever defense you put up isn't suffice to the direct multiplicative uh, reduction, and attack down is the most effective way of reducing damage from the boss. So slowing down the boss and speeding yourself up, both 40% speed down and 40% speed up, allow you to effectively double the enemy's turn when you have the same speed. So um, those are the key things you look for in a supporting hero. The next secondary set of buffs you're looking for are things that can really out, uh, help your team do a lot of damage output. So usually you're looking at attack up, uh, skill damage increase, um, or I think the most effective one is actually all of these um, deep poison, deep burn, deep um, bleed. These type of heroes um, usually are great for boosting that type of damage uh, as well. So those are the key things that you look for in a PvE hero. And if it has like four or five of those things in a single hero, that makes it a really strong hero. And we do see that in the support heroes uh, we have on the top. Uh, immunity is also a great thing and you find immunity very, very, very valuable in a lot of the boss content, especially when the ads beside it um, give you a lot of trouble uh, with the debuff they put on you. Now, what makes a really strong uh, DPS hero um, besides doing a lot of, a lot of damage is we want that damage to come in very consistently. And if it needs to ramp up, it needs to ramp up very quickly. Uh, it needs to have strong wave clearing capabilities. Uh, so high AOE damage, high single target damage as well uh, will be great. So a lot of heroes um, can usually do one, not both. Um, and that is what you're kind of looking for. And ideally with some sort of ramping mechanic so that they do extra damage against bosses is always very nice. So when we look at some of the top DPS heroes here, many of them have that particular attribute. Uh, so with those criteria uh, in your mind, uh, let's go through this tier list and we'll work our way from the bottom up. Uh, and again, I won't name every hero. I know many of you enjoy me mispronouncing some of the name of the heroes. Will not waste time doing that. Um, and the icons hopefully are big enough for you to figure out which heroes these are. I will remember to, you know, uh, to click around my mouse so it doesn't disappear if I'm making comments about a specific hero. Um, so starting off the bottom and some of the movement and changes, uh, getting out of the rework section, uh, we have Taru making it out, we have Mad Madalena getting a rework, both of them moved out. The other hero that moved out the old rework tier list uh, in the last six months is actually Timmy. Timmy got a very good rework, giving him uh, attack down, slow down, um, uh, and term meter reduction, making him a very good hero. Um, and getting consolidation into his kit, um, very good for for becoming a support hero from his original kit. Uh, I think he also still does critical damage down as well. So very rounded kit for reducing the boss's damage, um, just simply doing a lot of debuff and pushing back the turn meter, which is great. Uh, Taru got his kit a little bit more well-rounded than before, um, making him a little bit more viable with shielding, consolidation, all of it together. Uh, and the other one making, I think, making out of, yeah, I think those were the two ones I called it. Oh, Madalena also got a rework. Her damage is a lot higher now. Um, from a PvE perspective, again, she's more routed for um, uh, PvP now, um, but we're doing a PvE tier list, so we won't go talk about her, how her kit works in PvP. She has the defense down for PvE, but again, these are really and underutilized, you wouldn't be using these heroes in the A tier for PV, uh, PvE much, unless you are out of options, but they aren't so terrible that, you know, you they're kind of almost unusable, like you would literally use anything else before uh, you consider these heroes. So, Madalena, at least you can use it in faction, you can use it in, um, you can uh, use it in tower mark if you're desperate, uh, I guess. Um, so she she is okay, a lot better than before. Now the remaining hero here, we won't go into them, but they seriously need a rework. Um, 
So those are the heroes I would suggest you avoid investing into, or if you really need to invest in, into them, they're probably set up for your next regression potion once you get a better, much better substitute, either for faction or towers. Onto the A tier list is sort of like the heroes, either they're very good in PvP, for example, Ascendo, um, Belton, who did a lot of damage um, burst, but lacks the sustained damage to be a really good viable PvE option. Um, you, uh, you also, let's see, then you have heroes, you know, we have Thanatos up here, got moved down. Uh, Thanatos, yes, it can ramp up, but really the, the damage he can output and the damage reduction, it's really to himself, not to the whole team. So yes, he gets a little bit better, but he's still, he's not a very good team player. So one common theme with all of these damage dealers in here, they don't, do enough damage compared to the ones on top or if they're support, they only do do one thing. So for example, um, you, you, Horrify is not reliable. Strip is kind of okay, but that's all they do. Uh, the heal, again, from uh, uh, Alahan is is so-so. The strip is more of a shield stripping only. So, so the kit is not that comprehensive. Fiona has a nice revive, but that's more and stun, but you can't stun the boss. And if you need a revive, you're probably dying already. So you can see a lot of these kits are, are not ideal. Popper, Brynhild are more PvP heroes as well. Um, so this entire section really is avoid using them, but if you build them for PvP, you might, you know, be a temporary slot until you get that five hero ro roster from the faction that you really need it to clear that specific content. Okay, on to your A tier. So these heroes are all viable now. Um, they do a decent amount of damage. You can clear early mid-game content with them, no problem. Uh, for example, um, Oakman, you can get a, get a copy of him out of the arena, and he will help you tremendously in the force faction if you're really, uh, if you're really kind of you know short on options there. Uh, we look at um, uh, Mechio. Mechio is great in PvE for faction. He does a lot of turn meter reduction when he's fully exclusive. He does a lot of AOE damage. Uh, he can clear waves. He can do. Uh, he's just not as strong as some of the other heroes uh, up here now. Um, uh, we have Adelaine, who's a new hero that's been added. Um, she. She's here. It's kind of like uh, Ikena is you need a lot of setup to get her to work. She works really well owning a full bleed team on her own. She's a little bit like uh, she's not that great. Uh, Luna is great damage, but really it's more of the cleanse and more of a PvP setting. Um, but most of the supporting here are viable. They bring a nice 40% shield, usually on a three turn cooldown. Um, you have a lot of innate support. Um, author is a little bit more PvP, but PvE is still viable because starting the turn, you give everybody um, protect ally, so 50% damage reduction to the whole team, which is great. And you know she she loses her shield if um, half of her health is reduced, and she gets it back really quickly. Um, so overall, all of the heroes in here are quite viable. They're not the greatest. If you're starting out, um, you know they could be used, and all of them, um, they do see some play at least in faction. So out of the support heroes in the faction, when you're doing faction specific content, they they most of them do definitely see play there for sure. Um, on to the next section, us. So these are now heroes that you see. Outside of Faction Abyss, they're really strong. You see them in potentially in Wuthering Coast. You see them, in, you can use them to clear campaign. They they help you in Broken Lands. Um, these become heroes that are definitely worth building, uh, quite strong. So for example, I think a lot of us got many copies of Anna. I think she was on the hero, um, hero the monthly hero, free hero a few times, I think. Um, so Anna, Anna is great. Anna exclusive three does a tremendous amount of damage with uh, her wave clearing capabilities. Uh, she's going to boost. Uh, she's going to get an attack up to your team, and when she has, you know, her own unique passive, she's going to get her own speed up. She she really uh, boosts a lot of damage 
from the from one of the free echoes we got all got in November uh, when she has that echo paired up. It really puts her uh, into the S tier up from the A plus range. Uh, similarly, um, now in this category, we start seeing the heroes uh, that re really enable a lot of extra damage. So, for example, uh, Chardonnay here has deep bleed. Uh, we got Magdi with deep poison. Um, the only reason, you know, Dakota is better than the Adeline is because she brings uh, additional capability like attack up for your team, speed up for your team, beyond just doing a big nuke and really taking advantage of all the existing points, poison stack, like how Adeline takes advantage of all the excess amount of HP burn stacks. Uh, we talked about Timmy's changes already. I think um, Barry, I know a lot of people don't use Barry anymore, but with the changes with Blessing and with his own unique Echo, he can actually get a lot of crit, crit damage and mastery, allowing him to be very powerful to clear waves and uh, still do a lot of damage as well. Um, some of the old heroes we see um, are still here. Uh, Hizaro is still very strong. We, we have the three turn cooldown reduction on severe wound, as well as being able to trigger bleeds, um, makes him very viable for bleed teams. Uh, and his own bleed damage on his own even, he can stack up quite a bit of bleed stacks at high exclusives. Um, so very good support team. When we start looking at the support heroes in this category, we have the likes of Guhana, um, who can speed ups, uh, slow down, turn meter reduction, cleanse. Uh, you got, so it's, it comes with, with a very comprehensive kit, very similar to Luna. Um, and then you also have likes of Grace, where you have shields, consolidation, you have uh, effective hit up, crit damage reduction. So you have a lot of uh, debuffs and buffs coming out of these support heroes. Right. Melod is great in all poison team just to match with the rest. You amplify damage, you do joint attacks. Um, very good hero uh, for a poison setup. So you actually see play in these heroes even in some of the best teams. That's why they're S tier. They're definitely, so when we go from S tier and up, up pretty much all of these heroes are definitely worth building. Veronica, um, super high. Uh, Poison damage with high exclusive, you can you can single target and blow up the entire wave with spreading the poison around. Um, all the heroes here are very solid. I think Zora is a Zora and Malosh are two new heroes. I think in the last month that showed up. Zora does. Um, I think I did a showcase on Zora or, or did a hero review. Um, she, she does a lot of damage, even not when the enemy has poison on them. So she's just straight up doing, ignoring defense damage, great for wave clearing again. Um, and she also has a very valuable attack down. Uh, Malosh uh, ramp up a lot when the team does a lot of detonation and we have attack up. So great in uh, a detonation heavy team as well. Uh, pairing up with likes of O'Grady's, uh, Andreas. Again, definitely a hero you would wanna be running in Faction Abyss as well. So all these heroes, they have a role to play. A lot of the hero in here, it's questionable whether or not you even need to build them um, uh, to complete the faction-specific content. I think with the exception of maybe Tuck, I think, will be kind of faction required because that faction really needs a few shielders, but you do have other options than Tuck as well. Um, but here, definitely all of these heroes, you will, you will see them one way or another in the... Uh, faction content. Uh, Bully or Bull, I moved him down from S plus in the prior review, um, maybe because Karzak has a particular love for Bull. <laughs> um, but but in all seriousness, Bull is really strong. Um, a lot of AOE attacks, but in terms of the the damage you can output in comparison to um, other damage dealers that are in the S plus category. Um, it is missing a little bit. If you're looking for a lot of uh, AOE direct damage, I think um, I think he's still a really good option. It's just there's very few content where you need a lot of direct AOE damage. So, you know, comparing to because um, a lot of the AOE, a lot of you you have really strong wave clearing capabilities 
indirect damage heroes with likes of Lucifer. So you really don't need bull uh, anymore, uh, especially what's required to clear um, what's required to clear uh, the 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 hidden wave content there. All right, on to the S plus section. So here we have very strong mythic heroes in this section. You got Lucifer, Allcaster. Allcaster is a great wave clearer, uh, doing control, defense, breakdown, attack up for your entire team. So having control and good buffs uh, for your team. And um, there is always the Allcaster cheese, which is a nice plus for him as a possible option. Um, Lucia, um, stealth, um, a lot of bleed, really useful for a particular hero in Elemental City. Um, ben, joint attacks. Nirid, I think, is a new one since the last time we have done the tier list. So Nirid does a lot of damage boost for uh, dot teams, and it's for the dot damage the enemy takes. So, um, and she has the ability to clear waves very effectively. Uh, she cycles her skills very effectively and able to control them as well. So Nirid is a great hero. Um, if you don't, if especially if you're free to play and you don't want to invest into Little Jack for that damage amplification up front, um, so maybe running something like if you can only invest into one limited hero through the Rainbow Chest, just grab Santa, grab a Nirid. That forms a really good team with the likes of Catherine, um, Catherine, Nordak, and maybe Nita. And that will make a solid five-person team for you. That will be suitable for majority of the content out there. Um, outside of these heroes, if you want to avoid getting Nordak and you happen to be able to pick up a, a French or pick up um, a Mumu, Mamook um, or even uh, Hal, these three heroes are great in terms of increasing your team's survivability, taunting, uh, reducing the boss's damage with attack downs, uh, critical damage down. This is absolutely uh, invaluable for improving your team's survivability. Um, we got a new hero added from Sega City here. Uh, worth talking about is Anaru. Anaru has um, a lot of healing uh, and supporting capability for your team to keep them alive, giving them uh, additional shields. Um, and the way she works is really unique because she can do attack down and slow down on the boss. Her second skill is always up. So and her second skill is always triggered when she has unique buff stats, stacks when she renewals uh, it with her ultimate, which is every three turn down cooldown. And the beginning of the way, she also reduced cooldown for her entire team. So it's sort of like um, an alternative version of Mar Marvel. Um, Marvel heals when your your ally gets hit. So both of them really strong support working, fulfilling very similar roles. Um, great for turn reduction between waves. Uh, and um, I think Marvel is a little bit better in the sense that you, I mean, I think, yeah, both, no. Uh, Anaru doesn't provide consolidation, but Marvel provides consolidation. Um, and also extend existing buffs. I think the buff extension is absolutely great for keeping Nordak, for example, pairing with Nordak and Lydia, or uh, and just completely keeping the damage immunity up the whole time, which is great for Marvel. Uh, Marvel used to be up here in God tier, but with the likes, she still can't compare to the likes of um, Santa. Um, and when you have Lydia around, a lot of the time you can't fit in a Marvel in there because you still want to do more damage. Because um, damage check and DPS check seems to be the requirement for some of the higher stages when you go between 36 to 40. Um, it's really a stat and damage check at that point. Survivability is not really, it's going to be a, it's not really the primary focus anymore because you're also racing against the time of that 300 turns. Um, Hen'e, uh, great support. The reason why Hen'e is not up here in PvE, I know some feel like Hen'e is really strong in PvE. Um, I mean, with fully kitted out, she still has the problem. She, she does a lot of direct damage. Uh, does a lot of direct damage, don't get me wrong. She she works well uh, against, you know, Marius, works well against Grillin. Um, just... It's sort of like the, the foolproof team that, as long as you don't mind waiting a little bit, um, 
she can definitely uh, help you get through some of the toughest content uh, and keeping your whole team alive. But it is a little bit slow and also there are a lot of situations where um, if your team all gets hit really hard, she will just die from all the damage transfer to her all at the same time. So, so that is a little bit of the drawback. Other than that, um, you know, she's really close between the two. Jingle Bell is another limited hero that was added last Christmas. Really strong, but require a little bit of a setup. So very good at killing bosses where you have to have Wrestler, uh, Ben Austin, Big Jack, everyone just doing a lot of joint attacks and pursuits to make her work. Now, when you run a team like that, you also run out of spots for a lot of supports and survivability. So she's not as versatile as many of the other heroes. That's why she's down here as opposed to in God here. She needs like a full team built around her. Now, moving into God tier, I think we covered all of the heroes. Everybody knows Catherine. Yep. Oh, uh, Nidroid also moved from top to bottom. Uh, from God tier down to S plus Nidroid, yes, very strong, but I think when everybody else kind of outpower crept him, he kind of got it, got to move down a little bit. Um, Bleed is probably the weakest again, um, and they need to find a way to make Bleed comparable to others. I think it's just, you know, with the introduction of Momolo, introduction of, of yeah, I think mainly Momolo really um, made HP burn a lot stronger. Uh, Adeline does make HP burn stronger. Bleed, I think, now is probably the lowest on the fa uh, on Wuthering Coast in terms of damage. And when Sega City came out, I feel like Sega City's damage was so high with Indra that I don't know if the devs will make Bleed even stronger than now. I'm just trying to figure out. Uh, Chardonnay was a great boost to Bleed damage, but what can they do now to make Bleed even more? Do they need to like do Deep Bleed? three like do 100 percent more bleed damage i don't know but what if you really need bleed damage though if like you get the dungeon buffs definitely a nidroid is a great pick for and better than um better than uh, lukia in the sense that um he also have aoe clearing abilities for waves uh, if the enemy's taking extra bleed damage valentina got moved down as well valentina actually once you start using her a little bit you see she does fall behind the other two ec heroes so if you want to choose your first uh high damaging ec hero i would actually consider investing in momolo then O'Grady's, um unless you want to build a, a burn focused team and then O'Grady's might be a better fit than momolo so transitioning into our final tier our god tier i don't think i need to say much about the first few heroes everybody knows how broken they are these limited heroes um, maybe we'll talk about Big Jack. Big Jack was introduced in the last uh, Halloween patch, um, so about two, three weeks, two, three months ago, you know, end of October. Um, he brings a lot to the table. Uh, he basically also provides the equivalent of um, a 40% heal reduction, um, shield effect re reduction. So that will help against Greneth. Um, he also um basically puts this ability on allies to boost their attack and dot damage direct damage the echo allow his hp to convert it to scale into boosting attack for for allies he's going to join attack and scale a lot of detonation damage so he's a support a damage dealer and basically giving your allies extra lives when when someone's hit and is taking a fatal damage, he instantly reduce, uh, returns them to full health and put damage immunity to them. And he can trigger this up to three times uh, in per wave, which is huge. Uh, you see him in a lot of composition, both in PvP and PvE. Uh, you see him a lot in the new um, Blessing, uh, where you, people are farming Blessings uh, and he's used on the team because he adds a lot of more survivability to his team, similar to to Santa. I know people ask, well, my Jack is super fast. How do I prevent him from uh, getting, you know, allies killed because he's causing them to run out of buffs? Um, the answer is really, um, you just need to make sure that that you have a really force fast Nordak as well. Um, and hopefully you're killing the enemy a lot faster with him on the team so that uh, even if they trigger, they trigger the apple, they trigger his immunity, um, in between you will be able to uh, get Nordak to, to save them. Ideally, you want your Nordak to be fast, just slightly behind Jack is the recommendation I would give. Um, 
So that's kind of the top row of heroes. We all know how good Jack is. The detonation damage is crazy from scaling, especially at exclusive three. Um, massive improvement to his personal damage from exclusive two to exclusive three, as well as the additional 40% stackable attack down that's always on the enemy target without worrying about effective hit issues. Now, talking about some of the newer heroes, um, we got Moshi and Indra. Now, Indra does require a bit of a setup to have uh, DMU to work well with him. Literally, this guy can do uh, over 100 mil damage in, on the first turn with a proper setup. Just D DMU and um, Indra by themselves, I think you can do upwards of 50, maybe, yeah, like 40 to 50 million, um, just the two of them. Um, it's a little bit absurd, but they are, um, he's a one-shot heavy cannon, not a glass cannon, because he's really tanky, because he's defense space scaling too. So, um, just an insane boss damage dealer. Like, wouldn't be surprised if people are just getting anywhere between two to, like, just a Sega City team alone focus, maybe with the likes of, um, Thus, you could easily do two to three billion damage on Weathering Coast with this guy uh, without factor, yeah, about two to three billion. And, and that was scaling off of my stats. I'm pretty sure with Kraken stats, you could push that even higher. Um, so that's with Indra, and there's videos on him. If you went go to my channel, um, there was quite a few released in the last couple of weeks talking about Sega City Heroes. The ones is Moshi. Moshi is like Andreas. Without now, why is they're on the same same level in the sense Andreas scale up and ramp over time. So the more detonation damage he goes up to 40 buff, allowing his attack to go like up by more than double, like three times, right? So it's easy to see Andreas up with 150,000 attack by the time he gets to 40 stacks. So crazy boss killer once he fully stacks up from detonation damage. Uh, Moshi is crazy at wave clearing and and just taking a lot of turns and stacking up a lot of internal injury. Um, so really good from that perspective. Um, and even on bosses, um, she still you know does quite a bit as well uh, at exclusive three. Um, both Hazanja and Anhijin, uh Anhijin still do a lot of um, HP burn damage. Um, Anhesion benefits a lot from her own echo, allowing her to catch up and even potentially surpassing um, Hazanja in, in in HP burn damage uh, with that particular echo. So there you have it. Uh, and I um, I think Mamlo, yeah, Mamlo just scales off HP burn, increases HP burn damage, provide deep HP burn. All right. Um, crazy amount of damage on his own without even pairing up with other HP burn heroes. So uh, super strong HP burner hero at high exclusives. O'Grady is just a complete kit boosting, synergizing tremendously well with all of the other uh, HP burn heroes. At exclusive three higher, she start increasing her personal damage drastically. I think it's at either exclusive four or five. Like she does a ton of damage herself as well now. Um, so there you go. Um, took 30 minutes. We went through the tier, tier list. Now, if you have any questions about these, these heroes or you have a strong opinion where a hero should move two tiers up or down, please don't let me know. Like, you know, you feel like, yeah, a hero can move up a tier or down. A lot of these are a little bit judgmental. I do agree sometimes, um, especially if you are build a hero and used it a lot, um, you know, you might want to move one up or down so there is a few that is arguably possible to move up or down but in general i try to keep the same type of function heroes together um hopefully you found this useful basically the reality is again like i said uh, while i was consulting some of the the veteran players uh they said well who needs a tier list nowadays uh when you can just you know buy boxes and get um, all the limited heroes and you just need to run that one team Yes, that's true if you are, you know, that 1% or 2% of the player base that can afford that. But for majority of the free-to-play out there, I know you appreciate to know what is the priority to invest into your resources. Um, for players that's been around for over a year, even if you're free-to-play, you probably have a lot of these heroes um, 
um, um, built already, but I feel like tier lists are probably most helpful for people getting into the game who are interested in playing and just want to have a quick overview of uh, what's good to invest into. So hopefully this was helpful for you, um, and and I'll catch you next time. Gandalf out.